sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way, because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person is the sweetness from the flavored drink Alleluia Jinga Tea Drink and Alleluia Tamarind Drink. The flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100% natural. Enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it. Made by Alleluia Reflexology, Healthy Solutions and Nutritional Research Center Limited. Get yourself a bottle of Alleluia from all shops around. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. Twenty eighth of September, twenty twenty two. Women Crush Wednesday. Good morning, Uganda. Thank you for joining us. It is midweek. I don't know whether it's a midweek full of happiness or midweek full of uh, worry or midweek full of anxiety, but we are yet to figure that out. Of course, there is a lot happening from one corner of the country to another. But of course, uh, one of the biggest stories right now uh, surely is that Ebola is out there. But also the Ministry of Health is doing what it can to make sure that it gives you all the information that you desire and to avoid panic, to avoid all the wrong, uh, the misinformation coming in from all the wrong sources. My name is Philomena Masko. I am with the Full House. I do have Morlin, I do have Felix and Robert with me. Yesterday, Parliament sat and they had quite a lot of things to talk about. But, but one of the most interesting things for me was uh, the fact that they were talking about passing a motion for government to actually come up with a national agriculture bank and this is majorly uh, to be able to sustain farmers especially when it comes to the incomes and also growing this sector now this is a motion that has been also being uh, been fronted by very many farmers the problem is we don't know whether it will come to pass or not but now that it has already been discussed clearly uh, there is some green light at the end of the tunnel we do have a farmer and quite a passionate one about that here I know Uncle Bob, you're quite passionate about farming. Yes, Felix, he is. Yes. One, that the loans currently offered by commercial banks not favor farmers. Mm -hmm. I remember one time this when our interest went, rate went very high, and I was discussing with one farmer, and he said, "By the time I got this loan, I expected to get maybe <coughs> ten trays a day." Yes. Now, when the interest goes high. And again, so that I meet that. So there is that urgent need for uh, a bank that looks at the problems, challenges of farmers and some farmers do not have the corato needed. They are what we call Vivanja holders so they can't bring land titles. So this will better understand their issues and address them better. And us being our backbone, being agriculture, for me I think it's long <coughs> overdue. Many of them even just lack money for pesticides. Yes. Because these other banks <coughs> don't really understand how f farming works. Mm -hmm. They don't. They see it as a risk venture. For example, Felix uh, plants his maize, then a storm comes. They don't understand that. They would rather go to give people who are going to import things in the country, do yes. other things like that, than agriculture. All right. Well, indeed, like I said yesterday, Parliament had a lot to talk about. One of the MPs also came out to urge government, uh, calling out to government to increase funding when it comes to mental health and psychiatry here in Uganda. Well, I do know that Molin is also quite passionate about health and uh, people right now, things, there is a lot happening mm. and uh, people are really not doing well mentally. Not so long ago, we saw statistics coming in uh, showing how Ugandans are quite losing it mentally. Good morning. What do you think about this morning? Yes, a very good morning to you, Philomena, the team, and of course, I'd say good morning, Uganda. Well, Philomena, if you ask me, there have been rising cases of uh, mental health issues, especially looking at the statistics also coming in from Botarica. <coughs> and I can tell you that it is the right time that uh, Ministry of Health came out to actually give it the utmost attention that it needs. Because when you look at mental wellness in this country, it is not an issue that has been, you know, well campaigned so that people are even aware.
I would say there's a lot of Ugandans who don't even know that there is help out there in terms of seeing uh, a psychiatrist or even a therapist. And people are suffering with most of these issues just also because ministry has not given a leeway to people accessing this kind of, of help. And that poses a challenge. Uh, so when I saw the parliament trying to bring this up and of course um, advocate for more information on this, more awareness on mental health, I was like, yes, that is a good direction to take. But also we have to take into consideration that government has been dealing with a lot when it comes to Ministry of Health from the pandemic to most of these outbreaks. Right now we have Ebola and some of these issues are not taken into um, uh, consideration. But I say it is the right time to, to talk about mental wellness in this country and of course include even more facilities apart from Botavica which has had even a lot of help with most of the NGOs most of the facilities across this country are not getting the attention they need when it comes to helping with mental wellness well, there you go. And when it comes to the older persons, I also know that Felix uh, is quite passionate about our grandparents. And, and, and I mean, he's, he's it's, well, I mean, we all should be concerned about the older people in our communities. And Ugandan, the Ugandan government has not, uh, you know, deferred away from that. We do have the surge where we, I mean, it is there meant to, uh, it's meant to cater for the older people. Now, there was a motion in a parliament where MPs were asking a government and even a surge as a platform to be able to, for it to be sustainable, uh, they should be reducing the age of uh, the older persons who are beneficiaries from 60 to way below that. They're thinking that 60 is quite high edge for people to be beneficiaries of sage they're saying maybe 55 you know because people retire at what age honestly in uganda well 60 but i mean when you look at most of the population well i don't know do you think we are really truthfully passionate about our old people in uganda i mean at a community level at a government level felix do you think we've done what we have to do to make sure that uh, they are sorted and catered for well, good morning, Philo. Good morning, Felix. How are you? Great. How are you doing? You look awesome again. Thank you. Again. <laughs> uh, for whatever reasons, keep it, uh, let those reasons keep alive. Again, uh, again, and drink water. Uh, please, keep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but, but uh, it's um, about the elderly. I think as a country, we have totally failed in yes. that regard. Um, one of the most neglected. Uh, cluster of people mm. is the elderly yes. in this country, most neglected. Um, they don't have good health care, they don't have good um, care, social care, all these things you have, we don't talk about them, we only talk about giving them 20,000, what, you know, <laughs> and really, uh, and for me that's the biggest challenge. I think <coughs> that their need is not necessarily about the money, they need care ultimately as it is. You know, one of the ways that uh, this was tried uh, to, uh, had been mitigated was the National Social Security Fund yes. to assist some people who are getting into retirement. But definitely, there's a lot we can do as a country, and probably that speaks to communities very really much more. We have seen, uh, you know, in you know, no localities we, we, we stay. You yes. see how old people old really people suffer. people are treated, yes. You know, in this country, we have children who beat their parents. You've seen, if you watch news, <sighs> land, you know, do the laws protect the elderly, really, in terms of land, okay, in terms of uh, health access, uh, you know, availability of uh, social commodities, you know, all mm -hmm. these things. And um, I think there's a lot we need to do. But as we wait for that, Philo, for me, I think far from the parliament and uh, the government at large, we must take this upon ourselves <coughs> as children, as grandchildren. I think the elderly really need a lot of care. Yes. And we're having this story earlier on with one of our colleagues here. Uh, and uh, we talked about how people who grow old, like they tend to grow backward. Mm. If you've spent, someone, I've spent almost all my life with grandparents, so I know that when they grow, they like become babies. Mm. In everything they do, it, even it's the, like a reverse <coughs> cycle kind of thing. That's the thing. Yes. Once they start hitting <coughs> sixty something, they go back to the childhood setting, in how they speak, what they say. Away from these Kampala judges, but I'm talking about <laughs> some of us who, who have the You're real, real, real. You have to throw more light on the Kampala judges. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> you have not met them. Like sometimes, no, I when, and and and. and 
Uh, anyway, I don't want to take it against them. Like, there are times we go to churches, I've had this experience, and I meet someone old today, and they tell me, you know, I walk from this place to here, I don't have transport to go back. Then the next, <laughs> like, if you if you touch around, like, five, six minutes, you meet the, the person, person again. They yeah. forget that they are. <laughs> and then you're like, nah, hey, yeah, yeah. but did I come around? Don't they have it? <laughs> Because I know man. what they are facing <laughs> these days is they raise their children, but this issue of sending children to grandparents. I know you meet these Kampala judges uh -huh. we're talking about, Robert. Some of them with grandkids. Why do you, you I know, think this person no raised best you, place for they the made child. you what you are. Then you take children, <clears throat> she wakes up in the morning, or he wakes up in the morning to care for those children. No, 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 you I see, really find that very no, 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 Robert, Robert, you see, if you're lucky and you are you are not raised by those circumstances sometimes don't permit the world we live in is about it, it's, it's a rush life country trust me and out of 10 yeah. only two will wish for that to happen but for the eight they have nothing and the best option is to take these kids to their grandparents man countries like uganda where we have we have mothers who are up by three Oh. You, you, you know, you know, but they are going to, to Kusula. What is Kusula in English? Oh, wholesale, <laughs> wholesale purchase. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, they are, they are, they are going they to are Kusula, going to Mbu, Yes. Yeah. All these things they take. But then after that, they probably they have to fight on lorries, what? Mm -hmm. Then they have to take to their markets. And now they have to sell to the morning people. Mm. Then they have to sell in the evening. Then they go back in the markets. Now, how do you raise a child like that? Sometimes it's really not even about the parents. I know every parent would wish to raise their children, yes. honestly and truly. But actually, I'm so proud of this elder. Trust me, one day when we have some time, I'll tell you why. Personally, I've been through their hands. And I've, I don't think there's any better person to raise a child than a grandparent. <laughs> Trust me. No, Although, I, I, I don't know, that know about fact. that, for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. Because I think we take it for granted. In, in <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> you know. Well, what <laughs> I say? I, let me tell you one thing for sure. Because in this country, we don't have facilities for elderly care. If you look at developed countries, they have facilities to take care of that. Now, at a time your, your grandparents reach 90, even being at home, they're supposed to be taken care of. Now, how are you giving them kids to take care of? Yet, they're the ones that require the help at that moment. So, I think we just take it for granted. Oh, it's like a norm. It's okay to take it's grandkids. It's an African to, thing, I think. Yeah, but most, it's not most right. Most people actually take yeah. it for granted. Most yes. of these, these elderly people need the help from you. That's true. And now, for you to give them more responsibility, it's just not right. I think people need to find a balance. Between your kusubula and all that, you shouldn't be able to take care of kids. So or find help but instead of <laughs> yeah you just and you know judges will never say no, no yes. they will be like no no it's okay that's bring, what bring makes children. them special that's what i was talking but about see, it's, it's not right i that's think we need about to tone it, it for down granted. a little what's not yeah. right <laughs> yeah this is but, family but you have to spare your grandparents i mean yeah. I, I, no rather but, your but, parents. but 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 philo yes. while at it mm -hmm. these kids support the grandparents it's not like they're only seated there like they, they help they, they hope you're talking about the Did kids they? give it to these That is not universal. The, the, the old don't. ones a bit. The, the ones that are the old enough, really old, the but the young ones child. actually don't. If you look at the category oh. they take for them, they oh. are the three-year-olds, the, the four-year-olds. Are these don't children do are really spoiled by the I way they're yeah. yeah. taking ah. ah. to their grandparents? Exactly. Most because of them are really spoiled They're so loved, they're overpumped. Yes, it's true. Most of them are actually spoiled. You will apologize for that. They're not so handy, but well, this conversation about I wouldn't exchange anything for the life <laughs> I spent with my grandparents. <laughs> Nothing in this world. I know. Nothing. And, and, and. May God bless their hearts. <laughs> well, we do go to see some of the stories that did uh, come to the news desk yesterday. Some of the local stories, some of the international stories. Uh, but right now, we start off with our very own. And that is His Excellency assuring Ugandans that the oil pipeline will go on as planned despite interference from the European Parliament, where President Museveni has urged the oil and gas companies in Uganda to continue with their operations and stay focused in order to achieve the 2025 oil and gas production time frame. While gracing the opening of the 7th International Oil and Gas Summit in Kampala, President Museveni criticized the European Union Parliament uh, disapproval of Uganda's oil and gas activity. 
He said Uganda is an independent state and will carry on as expected. The local and global focus is due to censure of the European Union Parliament to a multi-million dollar that is uh, Tilenga and the East African crude oil pipeline that will stretch over 1,400 kilometers from Hoima district, Uganda, to the port of Tanga in Tanzania. <coughs> Now, residents of Kasanga Tiwakiso district are in shock after a young man, Ivan Kasenge, died of a suspicious disease having symptoms related to Ebola virus at Kasangati Health Center in Wakiso district. Now, the body was buried by Minister of Health amid his tight security, and the Minister of Health has announced six new cases of Ebola. The new confirmed cases bring the number of, of cumulative cases to 24 and the number of deaths at five. The Minister of Health spokesperson also told UBC about the Kasanga T suspected Ebola case where a sample has been obtained and taken to Uganda Virus Research Institute. And members of the National Social Security Fund will earn an interest of 9.65% of their savings for the financial year 2021-2022, translating <coughs> into one point. 38 trillion that will be credited on their accounts. In accordance with the provisions of the NSSF Act, the new rates will be circulated and credited on the balance outstanding on each member's account as of 1st July. The NSSF interest declared is above the 10-year average rate of inflation which stood at 5.5% as at the end of June 2022. According to the fund, the rates are competitive rates in the market this year. Given the economic shocks faced in 2020 that have continued to impact on the global economy up to date, it is a decline from 12.5% <coughs> interest rate paid the previous year. According to Richard Biaru Gaba, the Managing Director NSSF, the fund has invested in short-term instruments whose returns are lower to provide for liquidity to pay eligible mid-term beneficiaries. Other performance indicators show that the fund registered growth in its assets under management that increased by 11%, for, that is forming 15.5 trillion to that is 17.3 trillion, and the member contribution that increased by 9% from that is a 1.3 trillion to 1.48 trillion. <coughs> Now back into Kampala, while we see police did come out to follow the consultative meeting between the local mayor, Irias Lukwago, and other members of the Border Board Association that was scheduled to take place at the City Hall. Lord Mayor wanted an input from stakeholders for a public transport management ordinance bill that streamlines public transport in Kampala City. And the police did deploy heavily in the morning at the City Hall, the seat of the Kampala City Council Authority to block a consultative meeting between KCCA and members of the Border Board Association, which the Lord Mayor Arias Lukwago was due to address. The political wing headed by the Lord Mayor recently drafted a bill, Public Transport Management Ordinance, into which Lukwago and his team were scheduled to consult with the Border Borders. The Lord Mayor found an empty and heavily secured hall. His plea for explanation from the police failed it is said that the Deputy Executive Director of the KCCA had written to the local mayor and team asking them to find a different venue. But the local mayor, Lukwago, denies receiving the letter, claiming that the Office of the Executive Director has no such powers. He blames the mess of the public transport in Kampala on those trying to sabotage the bill. And the Speaker of KCCA, Zahara Rubega, says they will not uh, come. And elsewhere, at least 76 protesters have been killed by Iranian security forces during 11 days of unrest sparked by the death of a woman in custody, activists say. Iran Human Rights, a Noah-based organization, accused authorities of using disproportionate force and live ammunition to suppress the dissent. State media have put the number of dead at 41, including several security personnel and blamed rioters. Hundreds of people have also been arrested.
20 of them journalists. The risk of torture and ill treatment of protesters is serious and the use of live ammunition against protesters is an international crime, says IHR's director Mahmoud Amir Moghadam. The world must defend the Iranian people's demands for their fundamental rights. The UN Human Rights Office also said it was very concerned by the authorities' violent response and urged them to respect the right to protest peacefully. The anti-government demonstrations have spread to more than 80 cities and towns across Iran since the funeral of Mahsa Amini on 17th of September. The 22-year-old Kaddish woman from the northwestern city of Sakez had been visiting the capital Tehran on 13th September when she was arrested by morality police officers for allegedly violating the strict law requiring women to cover their hair with a hijab or headscarf. <coughs> Now, Ali Matteo Salvini, leader of the Anti-Immigration League Party, won 8.8% in the lower house chamber of deputies, according to the Interior Ministry figures, while former Premier Silvio Bellusoni's right-wing Forza Italia party secured 81% in the chamber while announcing final election results in Italy. Together with a smaller party representing less than 1% of the vote, their right-wing coalition secured 43.8% of votes in the lower house of parliament. The League and Forza Italia performed worse than expected after taking 17 and 14 percent of the vote respectively in 2018. With addition of votes from Italians abroad and in two independent regions, the coalition ends up with a total of 237 seats in the 400-seat chamber and 115 seats in the 200-seat upper house senate, a clear majority but not the two-thirds supermajority it had been hoping for. Italy had been waiting for a final result on Monday, but counting took longer than expected despite the lowest general election turnout in Italian history. All Italian regions had completed their ballot count on Tuesday morning, except Sicily, where local media ran headlines about a scrutinio lumaca or snail account. And in Malawi, Malawi's John Chilemba gets a statue in London's Trafalgar Square. A central London's historical Trafalgar Square is set to get a new statue this Wednesday. By this time, it is not a monument of one of UK's war heroes or kings. Instead, it will be a larger-than-life statue of Malarian Baptist preacher and Pan-African John Chilembe, who fought against the British colonial rule. The sculpture named Antelope will be the square's nearest fourth length, which is regarded as one of the world's most public art commissions. Now, since 2003, the fourth length has been showcasing different pieces of the artwork every two years. While it was originally intended to display a statue of King William IV, it remained empty due to insufficient funds and now exhibits a temporary art selected through public consultation and the commissioning group. Chilembo's five-meter five statue will mark the first of an African in the Trafalgar Square. Cast in bronze, Antelope restages a famous photograph taken in 1914 of Chilembo standing next to the British missionary John Corey outside his church in Mbombo village in southern Malawi. In the picture, Chilembo is wearing a wide-brimmed hat, breaching a colonial rule which forbid Africans to wear hats in front of white people. Now, climate change is helping to rapidly turbocharge uh, storms like Hurricane Ian. Now, Hurricane Ian is quickly gaining monstrous strength as it moves over the oceans, partly heated up by climate change, just like 30 other Atlantic tropical storms since 2017 that became much more powerful in less than a day. As the world warms, the turbocharging of storms is likely to become more frequent, as scientists say. After getting 67% stronger in less than 22 hours from Monday to Tuesday, Ian is bearing down on Florida as likely Category 4 hurricane that threatens to deliver a nightmare storm surge to Tampa Bay. 
Ian's so-called rapid intensifying occurred after it traveled over the Caribbean waters that are about 1.8 degree Fahrenheit or 1 degree Celsius warmer than normal, largely because of climate change. Now, Colorado State University hurricane researcher Phil Clothbay says that the, water, the warm water creates a, lo a lot more rocket fuel for the storm, while climate change does not create Ian and other hurricanes. Scientists say that a warming world means an increase in rapidly intensifying storms. Well, uh, still speaking of hurricanes and Ian, yesterday, uh, Molin, uh, when you're not with us, we're here trying to brainstorm on the criteria that is used by all these uh, meteorologists, or I don't even know who names these hurricanes, <laughs> but we're just here trying to brainstorm what is the criteria that is used and why do they use uh, these specific names? Because Robert's yes. ar argument here was why can't they name them? <laughs> <laughs> well, there Something is, like that. Yeah, there is definitely a criteria to naming yes. of, of hurricanes. And uh, of course that falls in the category of typhoons mm -hmm. and tropical cyclones. For African side, they are called tropical cyclones. In the Philippines or Asia, there will be typhoons. Then in the US and a lot of European countries, there will be hurricanes. Now each year, the weather channel sits to actually get these names in line. Now, there is a next name that is already prepared for the next hurricane or typhoon or cyclone to hit an area. Now they use a lot, especially with people who have been, you know, um, pivotal in the weather world or climate science, and these names are put together. So you must be someone who has done a research or something related to science or even environment to actually make it to that list. It's not easy getting your name on that list. Even when you get there, you could be named after a very disastrous, you know, typhoon and yes. that keeps history. Some names have actually been recalled back, especially because of their intensity, how bad they were. It poses a question of bringing them back. It's just a whole different story. And just recently, meteorologists actually from the African side were also arguing to have most of uh, the names in Africa included on, the, on, that we on that list from the Weather Channel. And we're yet to find out if this is going to be included, but this definitely, this panel sits every year ah. to put out these names, yeah. Okay. So, uh, we expect now that at least uh, Molen is directly into the system of weather and she could really, we would about need to 10, hear. 4, 7 years yeah. from now we'll be yes. a, a, a hurricane, typhoon, I don't know. Probably hurricane a tropical cyclone. A tropical cyclone. Now we'd have to be named after the one that comes but directly to Africa. They, have to use they may use a flood. Mm. Mm. They use okay. modern flood or something like that. Because we don't get those well. things in Uganda. Well, if it, if it does, sure. at least we have we very many of floods lately, so we can use a flood Kenyan flood. I don't know. Anyway, we no, could. floods are not named. Please, floods won't be there. Yes, to see that. But yeah. also, uh, what our poll question this morning, seeing as we are going through an, uh, an Ebola outbreak, we just want to hear from you. What more do you think government can do to prevent uh, the rapid spread of Ebola? Of course, we know that um, the government already through the Ministry of Health has taken on some initiatives. But what more do you think it can do to make sure that uh, we prevent the rapid spread of COVID, uh, not actually COVID-19, of Ebola? And uh, let us know, get onto our Twitter. The hashtag is UBCGMU. Let us know. We'll be, of course, reading uh, some of your submissions much later on as we go on with the show. Right now, we are going in for an inspirational song. Uh, today is Women Crush Wednesday. So definitely, you know how and you know what the culture here in Good Morning Uganda dictates. We'll be giving you Woman, a great song from Juliana. I don't know if any of you people here are quite... Uh, I know, I know, Robert, you're in love with Juliana. You love Juliana for her music. I, I hope that's it. And, uh, well, I also do know... <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also do know another person who's quite passionate uh, about no, Juliana's it's just music. Clear. Yes. I love everything about Juliana, okay. from her conduct, how she behaves, being a female celebrated uh, musician, the way she handles her things. You just saw a recent concert. You know, she's a class above the ordinary then when it comes to music definitely how she keeps her life private remember that when the world just woke up this lady has given birth contrary so 
everything about her. And of course, mm -hmm. she also looks good. Eh? Well, <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh, we'll be giving you one great song from another wonderful woman uh, this Wednesday just to give you some inspiration to help you get out of that bed or get out of that comfort zone and start off your day. When we get back, we'll be having uh, some more discussions about the Ebola outbreak in the country. Good morning, Uganda continues right after this. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. In a lot of European countries, there will be hurricanes. Now, each year, the Weather Channel sits to actually get these names in line. Now, there is a next name that is already prepared for the next hurricane or typhoon or cyclone to hit an area. Now they use a lot, especially with people who have been, you know, um, pivotal in the weather world or climate science, and these names are put together. So you must be someone who has done a research or something related to science or even environment to actually make it to that list. It's not easy getting your name on that list. Even when you get there, you could be named after a very disastrous, you know, typhoon, and yes. that keeps history. Some names have actually been recalled back especially because of their intensity, how bad they were, it poses a question of bringing them back. It's just a whole different story. And just recently, meteorologists actually from the African side were also arguing to have most of the names in Africa included on, the, on, that, on that list from the Weather Channel. And we're yet to find out if this is going to be included, but this definitely, this panel sits every year ah. to put out these names, yeah. Okay. So, uh, we expect <laughs> now that Alistair uh, Mullen is directly into the system of weather and she and could really we would about need to 10 hear four her. seven years yeah. from now we'll be yes. a, a hurricane <laughs> typhoon i don't know probably hurricane a tropical Mollen. cyclone that tropical cyclone Mollen. i would Mollen. want to be named after the one that comes <laughs> directly to africa Mollen, they have to use they may use Indiana. a flood <laughs> you know, use okay. modern <laughs> flood or something like that because we don't get those well, things in uganda well uh, if, it, if it does sure. at least we have very many of floods that day so we can use a flood kenyana flood i don't know anyway no floods are not named please floods won't be <laughs> well, yes, we see that. but yeah. also uh what our poll question this morning seeing as we are going through an uh, an ebola outbreak we just want to hear from you what more do you think government can do to prevent uh, the rapid spread of ebola of course we know that uh, the government already through the Ministry of Health has taken on some initiatives, but what more do you think it can do to make sure that uh, we prevent the rapid spread of COVID, uh, not actually COVID-19, of Ebola? And uh, let us know, get onto our Twitter. The hashtag is UBCGMU. Let us know. We'll be, of course, reading uh, some of your submissions much later on as we go on with the show. Right now, we are going in for an inspirational song. Today is Women Crush Wednesday. So definitely, you know how and you know what the culture here in Good Morning Uganda dictates. We'll be giving you Woman, a great song from Juliana. I don't know if any of you people here are quite... Uh, I know, I know, Robert, you're in love with Juliana. You love Juliana for her music. I, I hope that's it. And, uh, well, I also do know... <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also do know another person who is quite passionate uh, about no, Juliana's just music. Clear. Yes. I love everything about Juliana, okay. from her conduct, how she behaves, being a female celebrated uh, musician, the way she handles her things. You just saw a recent concert. You know, she's a class above the ordinary then when it comes to music definitely how she keeps her life private remember that when the world just woke up this lady has given birth contrary so everything about her and of course she also looks good Eh? Well, <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh, we'll be giving you one great song from another wonderful woman uh, this Wednesday just to give you some inspiration to help you get out of that bed or get out of that comfort zone and start off your day. When we get back, we'll be having uh, some more discussions about the Ebola outbreak in the country. Good Morning Uganda continues right after this.
This is a quite a different strain. Uh, this one has been called the Sudan strain. Uh, earlier before, we have been dealing with the Zaire strain, and because of that, uh, we've had quite a, uh, we have, I think it's a vaccine that is uh, available for uh, adults, uh, specifically for this uh, Zaire strain. But this one is a bit different. It's new, and uh, clearly that means that we don't have any vaccine that is readily available for it. Now, as we know it, you, uh, the Ministry of Health, of course, and the government have tried as much as they can to make sure they do all that they do uh, to make sure that it is a not spread although it's quite a bit hard now we know that he did a start off from Mubende, which is right now the epicenter and as of course we stand right now the statistics as of 25th of september 2022 uh, new confirmed cases stand at about two and cumulative cases stand at about 36 now 18 of these have been confirmed and 18 of these are probable cases. And uh, we've also registered a number of two new deaths and uh, 23 cumulative deaths. Now, out of these, five have been confirmed deaths and 18 probable uh, deaths. Now, of course, when we say five confirmed deaths, it means that uh, these, some of the samples have been taken and they have come out a uh, positive uh, to show that they are positive of Ebola and now 18 probable deaths uh, clearly means that uh, the signs and symptoms were there but uh, there were no confirmed results yet and of course uh, active cases on admission are standing at 35 Yes, the Ministry of Health, of course, keeps updating every now and then. We also know that much later on today, His Excellency Yorick Agutam Seven is expected to give a national address a fully on Ebola. And, of course, uh, we are expecting him to tell us what's the way forward. How is Uganda standing? And, I mean, how is the country prepared for this? We've had Ebola outbreaks on a number of occasions back in the years, but it hasn't really been spreading so fast. And now we've been hearing rumors, you know, that it is in Kampala, although uh, the Ministry Ministry of Health has also confirmed that there are no registered cases in Kampala yet. So nobody should come to you telling you any information aside from that, of course, unless we get updates. But, you know, uh, generally talking about Ebola cases, I don't know. And, and I just really want, and, and I'm glad we all come from different communities, yeah? And I, I just want to maybe first speak from you. How well do you think your community is ready for this Ebola outbreak? Because we are getting generalized information. Much as Mobenda is the epicenter and we're in Kampala, we haven't gotten any cases yet. But do you think your community is actually prepared enough just in case? I don't want to lie because mm. actually uh, even in these areas where you've had outbreaks yes. apart from government interventions you find that people are not so much uh, alert much as these, these there are these messages that we have an outbreak of Ebola mm. go downtown if people were you would see at least uh, uh, maybe some social distancing because as long as you get in contact with fluid of an infected person you can contract, our skins are open. So maybe people would have that in their mind. Uh, people would be very sensitive. You have a cough, maybe, to follow up. But there's still something lacking. And that is so much of us Ugandans. Remember even during the days of COVID-19? Yes. It was during the second wave when we saw so many people die that people woke up to reality. Yes. Many were like, and now, because it hasn't really come to Kampala, though the, there is a case in Kasangat where they took blood samples yes. and we are waiting to see the results of that and for the people of Masaka one of the escapees you know turned up in Masaka with all signs and symptoms of Ebola so they, are, they took the samples we still wait mm -hmm. and uh, having known that there is a number of escapees people who are in contact with some of these people those that are burial and and they are still roitering you never know what can yeah. happen but when I look at the public concern. I find there's still more sensitization needed. Uh, when the president speaks, I'm sure that will also step up people's awareness, more so if he comes out with directives. And now uh, Ugandans wake up to the fact that, okay, maybe you don't move here, maybe that and that. That will sound better than drums. But usually for Ugandans, if it's not with you, if you've not seen one, then sometimes how we respond to such is very limited. Yes. You find them on their own business, you know, unless they wake up and they tell them that your neighbor there, or it is in Rubaga, 
you know, we've registered a case, then you see some bit of panic there. But when they still here move in the mm -hmm. uh, massacre, well, they remain. That's how we are. Yes. That's how we are. Issues of life. We, 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 are, about, uh, we are a bit yes. negligent. Remember, yes. government during COVID had to enforce. This was a deadly disease mm -hmm. that would uh, you would acquire just if you had a very short space, less than an arm's distance, you would acquire it. But remember, they had to enforce these things. Some would still go to their parties. Some would. So that is who we are. It is only when people feel and test the pain of a disease yes. that then they'll begin observing and believe it is with us, really it is with us. But as of now, I don't see... Even yesterday, I moved to a number of uh, even government, yes. public, but you wouldn't see that much, apart from where I'm moving. And, even, and also, you know, with Ebola, uh, also government, I think, having learned from COVID-19, I don't know what will come out of the president's speech, mm. but there is not that so much tightness. Uh, for example, in Mwende, in Chegwego, where we saw even the RAD, some headmaster had told children not to come to school. Mm -hmm. Well, I told no, let them come. You know? So we are coming from something where I saw tight measures, and now with Ebola, we see, of course, ways of how you can get the disease are not very similar. Yes. Though there's some little similarity. Uh, because for it, you, I must have touched or got uh, that fluid, yes. either vomit or fecal or what. Yet with COVID, it's hard even if I, I breathe and I'm infected. So, so there's some level of, I think, alertness they expect to create that activism in them. You know that, hey, we need to step up. Where it is still lacking, I don't think they've taken that very serious. Well, um, the poll question, of course, is about uh, this Ebola outbreak. What more can government, uh, you know, do to prevent the rapid uh, spread of Ebola in the country? Like we already said, there are some interventions that uh, they've already come up with. But what more do you feel like there is still a lot that is yet to be tapped into uh, by government to make sure that we prevent the rapid Ebola spread in the country? Hashtag UBCGMU. 0709602592 is the number you could send a WhatsApp message to or an SMS text. Now, still speaking of containing this virus, uh, Felix, uh, there was a discussion, of course, among us Ugandans saying that maybe, maybe uh, Muvende should be put under lockdown. Of course, the uh, government was saying, no, this, this, <coughs> this is not ideal. But uh, I don't know whether it's just the panic or actually Ugandans are quite concerned about what's happening over there. The thinking maybe if we try to lock down Movende, it could be one of the major ways that uh, we can contain the spread of this Ebola virus. I don't know. What do you think about this? Hmm. Is it well, a bit too extreme for what we are dealing with, or maybe it could actually come in handy? If, uh, in my opinion, that wouldn't um, be a solution, because up till yesterday we haven't conclusively known. Um, or conclusively established how far this particular virus has gone. The only that is known, there are samples that we await. For example, there's a death that happened in Kasangati. Yes. And uh, from the speculative uh, given is that this, this child was a student in some institute somewhere in Maganjo. So how does that help closing off Mubende. Yes. We have a case that escaped what my brother, uh, the escapees, as Robert puts them. <laughs> uh, he really brings that language that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember. <laughs> you become an escapee. He, he, he reminds me of, of high school. <laughs> so the, the escapees come from. <laughs> but, but, but some of them are in Masaka. Are you going to condone off Masaka? Mm -hmm. Are you going to condone Kasangati? Is and I mean, it's even so very hard to Nangabo. monitor their movements right and now. And we don't know. Yes. So I think, in my opinion, which is not expert, by the way, yeah. it, it, it may not be um, a solution in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the intermediate. However, I think the discussion we should be lodging right now, which I think the ministry has delayed to come out and give what we call an action plan in how we can avoid the spread of Ebola. Yes. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that people think, or the government sometimes, or the ministry for that matter, thinks it is, it is general knowledge because we have been there before or because, you see, 
and this is not only for, for Ugandans. Elsewhere in the world, people need to continuously be reminded. People love to use the analogy of Jesus. That uh, even when sin is still present in our lives, we never stop to, uh, to call on to God. Even when yesterday a pastor did something or a priest or a sheikh, people mm. will go back to church. Mm, that's true. We must continue to sound the drums of awareness. Like we have not had enough, honestly, I have not yet seen the campaign go so high in terms of uh, methods and ways we can uh, give our people to avoid the spread. I think for me that's the most important part of the fight at this point. Not necessarily condoning of places and what. The people in Mubendo, have we given them sufficient knowledge? Okay. The people, the, the health centers, do they have the, the relevant support? Yes. I think that's the discussion we should be having than the discussion of condoning of uh, areas and spaces. That if we are glad that we are getting the cases in hospital, I think that's the best thing. If the cases are being brought to hospital or they are coming to hospitals, where they are coming, do we have the relevant necessities or manpower to assist the people who come to hospital? Probably this is what will reduce the deaths. But the issue of closing off districts, in my opinion, again, which is not expert, may not assist. But right now, we should galvanize all our energy in looking at preventative measures. Mm -hmm. The people, the high alert areas like Kampala, Wakiso, the greater Wakiso, you look at Masaka now where they have Amubende and the neighboring districts. The border areas, border districts that border with Congo, the refugee camps that host uh, refugees from these particular areas, Congo. We are also told, I think, suspectingly, that some, peop some people who escaped went to Tanzania. You can imagine. How do we use so it? I think our focus should be in these areas and how they can manage, but later on prevent the spread of Ebola. This thing of condoning off may not give us conclusions because we have not truly established the, 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 the right movement of the people who have been... Uh, uh, moving with this particular uh, virus. So I think uh, we need to invest more in the preventative and, re and rather also uh, the management of the, the virus than, than, than panicking. Panic right now is, I think that's a panic button for me if you want to condone off areas. It may turn out to be a panic button in my opinion. Well, when you spoke of Congo, just uh, on Tuesday, I think uh, the North Kivu region uh, where they had uh, declared an Ebola outbreak, like say about six weeks ago, uh, they did actually declare themselves, uh, or they were declared that uh, they're now Ebola free. And uh, it's quite sad that we are hearing reports uh, which are not yet confirmed, but if it's true this could be so bad as uh, seeing that uh, some of the people are escaping to all these uh, different countries what we yeah. do not know is whether they are ready or not also still uh, speaking of uh, you did talk about uh, where we need to focus our energies right now especially the health personnel now the other day we did uh, see the medical interns at Mubende hospital deciding to thinking of putting their tools down because they're saying that they're not uh, being uh, sorted they're not being given uh, the, the the tools they PPE. need to make sure yeah the PPE yes I think know. Yes, the gloves and all that. And they were saying, uh, I mean, how are we supposed to help in this outbreak, in this kind of crisis, when we can't prevent ourselves? Because at the end of the day, everybody has to be a bit selfish. They have to protect their lives while they have to protect others. Now, th here, the, the thing is that, uh, do you think that Ministry of Health is diverting their priority or their en energies in the right place? Or maybe they just have a lot that is happening? I don't know. What do you think the Ministry of Health should be prioritizing right now? Of course... I know this, this ki came, kind of came on short notice. Of course, we saw we have dealt with it before, but if we see it happening now, uh, there is a lot of changes that need to be put in play. But, I mean, where should their priorities be focused uh, right now? Uh, when I heard of that issue of the medical students, it took me back to the year 2000. 2000, we lost a senior doctor. Actually, was the medical superintendent. Yes. That is of Lacho Hospital in Guru. And that was Dr. Matthew Lokuya. Recently, he was given a medal, recognized as a hero. His family was actually. Mm. His family was given a medal because he had passed on. But in honor. So when I say he was given, though mm. he had passed on, was recognized. But one thing that comes out clear is we know how a person can contract Ebola. A 
person presenting himself with almost every power on his body oozing a yes. bit of blood or that fluid. Some go to an extent of blood from the mouth, mm -hmm. the ears. And when you get in touch with these, there are almost 99% chances of you contracting Ebola. Now, how do these medical doctors offer treatment? Is they have to get in close contact with this person. Mm. And that means they are rendering themselves. Because what killed Dr. Matthew Lukuya is he was trying to help his colleagues, but he didn't have the protective equipment. He contracted the disease. And I remember recently I hosted Dr. Alan, and he said with the Sudan virus, you have 30 chances of survival. 30%, meaning you better not get it. Because the 70% are likelihood of you dying. And we know that some of these protective equipment, either we could be having them and they have taken long, because remember during COVID-19, we had also this where medical stores are saying we have them, we are working on logistics to deliver them, they have not requested. So priori priority should go to health workers because I have to first feel safe to save a life. Mm -hmm. If I'm not safe, then automatically I'm not going to put myself in arms way to save another life. Yes. If doctors do not have what they need to protect themselves or medical officers, then what you're going to have is these patients being brought in and isolated because no one is, no one is going to sacrifice themselves for a patient they have brought in whom they suspect to have Ebola. So number one is the frontline workers should be safe. And I want to add on, should be well motivated to deliver because this is not a fever. There's some hemorrhagic fever, but this is not something that you're, you're, you're treating malaria. Yes. If even you just have a wound and working on it, someone has to wear gloves. And some people still don't take it seriously. They actually think it's, 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 it's a myth. I mean, when you interact with some Ugandans, by the way, it's very disappointing. If you just ask an ordinary Ugandan, uh, well, what do you understand by Ebola? How do you think we are doing as a country? Someone will tell you, we do have Ebola in the country. It's very, very sad. And the problem is certain things move out of our minds very fast. In 2000, we lost about 200 people to Ebola in yes. this country. 200 in 2000 was the worst that we've ever had. So I want to tell you, this disease is very, very deadly. Very, very deadly. Most of the type that we have currently. And this means that you must be very, very careful. So I sympathize with the medical personnel. If what they are saying is true, that they have to first be safe for protecting themselves. Otherwise, we are going to register more deaths yes. in this country that would have been prevented. That is why you hear we've lost this number. These are probable cases because the Sudan uh, virus that we have, contrary to Zaire, is very uh, lethal. It kills, and there are many chances of someone not surviving once they have presented themselves with signs and symptoms of this disease. So by the time they get to hospital, if you listen to the case in Kasangati, yes. listen to the case in Masaka, uh, the medical doctor has explained this guy came, he was having blood from the mouth, from the ears. He's and, okay. Now, how would you handle such a person? Mm -hmm. Definitely, we need to save more lives. We need to reduce the death for those who are infected, but we can only do this among and top should be when the health workers yes. feel safe, feel protected, to come in and help by treating or perfecting their roles. If they are not safe, then you're going to see patients of Ebola abandoned, yet they need timely, quick, effective treatment. That will mean more death registered. 
Well, we can't talk about Ebola and, of course, we fail to talk about the two components of uh, this disease, the transmission and also the prevention. Well, if you actually never knew, you could prevent yourself from catching it. We're not saying it's impossible for you, but you can only play your part. And uh, speaking of the transmission, of course, it is a series of our inf uh, infection and often, uh, I mean, a deadly disease. And it is spread through direct contact with different or in different ways. Uh, number one, this could be uh, through body fluids such as blood, saliva, fecal matter, we do have vomit, urine and sweat of an infected person. Blood is part of it, like I did say, saliva, like fecal matter, vomit, urine and sweat. Now sweat, this one is quite a bit hard because I mean a normal person really sweats. So if you rub your skin or yourself against the other person uh, who is quite infected then I must say that you stand a chance of catching COVID-19. Now it's sold clothes of an infected person if you decide to do or to wear some of these clothes or come in contact with these clothes of course there is a chance of Ebola virus being transmitted to you and sterilized equipment used by an infected person in all these medical facilities if uh, all this equipment that is used by health workers is actually not sterilized well, you also do stand a chance of catching the Ebola virus. Handling wildlife, whether alive or dead, this is a no-go area. You should just keep away from it. Now, these are some of the ways that uh, Ministry of Health has come out to identify as a transmission um, ways of uh, the Ebola virus. So if you can, please uh, keep away from all this. Now, also switching to prevention of Ebola, which I think we should all take pretty much interest in. Well... Number one, you have to avoid direct contact with body fluids from any person or animal suspected of being infected with Ebola. Now, don't take your chances. Uh, just keep away from that for now because we are not sure. Like we did say, we are having now people escaping. I mean, we, it's quite a bit hard to track, but of course, Ministry of Health is uh, trying to make sure that they do that. But you cannot take your chances. And if you must handle a patient suspected to be suffering from Ebola, well, wear protective material, e.g. gloves and mask. The key word here is uh, suspected. Now, if you think you are relatively or a friend is not doing okay and they're they're putting out some signs and symptoms don't take your chances do what you have to do to protect yourself and you can also get in touch with health workers around your area and persons who are suspected to have died from Ebola must be buried immediately by a trained barrier team to prevent the spread of Ebola. Now this I know how much we all love our people and we would want to be there to, you know, to send them off. But I mean, if you suspect that they have died from Ebola, please keep away uh, from the bodies and let the trained barrier teams be able to handle this process. And in case you hand a person suspected to be infected with Ebola, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and clean water. Only water will not do anything. Soap is quite necessary, so we need to get back to the system of washing our hands like it was in COVID-19. I think it had become quite habitual for people wearing masks, although now they had kind of broken that uh, tradition, but we have to get back into it. And finally, report all suspected cases to the nearest health facility immediately, or you can already send a free SMS uh, to your report on 8500 or call uh, their toll free on 0800-100-66. Uh, Make sure that you be part of this journey of fighting the Ebola outbreak. Well, our poll question is also still running on uh, Twitter and uh, we want to know from you what more you think government can do to make sure that, uh, you know, we prevent the rapid Ebola spread in the country. Well, uh, your final shots on this gentleman, uh, Felix, uh, what would you have to tell an ordinary Ugandan who is a bit negligent? They don't care. They actually don't believe Ebola is out there. Uh, I know they actually know that it is <laughs> oh, You will be shocked. Yeah, but, but uh, probably... Some people think that... Uh, I've heard people think that these are stories made up by the media. Well, probably because... <laughs> we'll pra 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 uh, yes. Probably because well, the media has made stories before. So, it, it, I guess it's incumbent now on the media to work on their integrity. But uh, far from that, Philo, I think uh, we must take this upon ourselves together as a country. 
we must continue to sound the drums of awareness to help our people understand what they're supposed to do. I call upon all people in the media fraternity, the fourth estate, as the parliament did sit to make discussion into very many other things, I pray that they also sit to discuss uh, how or what is the role of parliament in assisting uh, reduce the spread of this particular uh, disease and outbreak. But together as a country we can definitely win over Ebola. We have been there before, we have come on top of this and we can do it again this time. But we must do it together. For us, people who are in churches, cultural leaders, take this upon yourselves. People who have congregations, how do you support uh, this fight against Ebola? Churches, reduce the numbers you have, probably increase on the services. Uh, malls, mall owners, all these people. Let's take this upon ourselves. Government can only do so much, truly. Mm. Uh, yes, Robert, your final shots, briefly. Okay. Ebola is real, it is true, it exists, and it kills. However, we've been in this situation before, and we've been able to overcome. There's no need to panic. Let's abide by what the experts tell us to do. And tonight, His Excellency will be addressing us on that. Please do not miss that address because I believe there are so many things that we'll be talking about and how better we can prevent that. So let's all be very vigilant. Let's report any suspected cases in time. And please, fellow Ugandans, in case you've been in contact with this person, it's not a crime. Please go to these isolation centers. Stay there until you're cleared so that we stop the spread of this disease. Otherwise, when you escape, when at the end of the day, supposing you're positive, you're going to die. But if you're identified early, put on treatment, then you'll survive. Let's also report these people. If you're sure, please let authorities know because you're protecting yourself and your loved ones. Together we can defeat Ebola. Well, the press review is up next after this break. Stay connected on the largest 4G network in Uganda using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi at only 75,000 Uganda shillings. It comes with 15 GBs free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 of your friends and family at a go. Visit the nearest Airtel shop to get one today or call 0800 333 330 for free delivery within Kampala. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GBs. Airtel, the smartphone network. When you talk about our motherland Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, you cannot fail to smile because of the smile that fills the faces of the citizens. Our nice good weather and nature that sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person is the sweetness from the flavored drink Alleluia Jingati drink and Alleluia Tamarind drink. The flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100% natural. Enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it. Made by Alleluia Reflexology, Healthy Solutions and Nutritional Research Center Limited. Get yourself a bottle of Alleluia from all shops around. Every waking day is a reminder just how beautiful this our land truly is the kind of beauty that you can only find here in the lush green all around us and the wondrous sights within it's in the distinct aroma of our cooking to the taste of food that takes you on a journey in the sound of homecoming and the sound of mother earth in the magnificence we find on our travel and the exciting moments we experience. Ours is the kind of beauty that comes in all things big and small. All we have to do is awaken our senses and truly enjoy what's uniquely ours. 
explore Uganda, the pearl of Africa. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. Well, the price review this morning, starting off with the Daily Monitor, UPDF chopper crash kills troops in Congo. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, President Museveni is asking for answers. The Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces last evening ordered the Deputy uh, Air Force Commander, Major General Charles Okidi, to head investigations into how and why two military helicopters, uh, which cost millions of dollars, dropped from the air three days apart. And uh, of course, uh, they're giving you some statistical details of uh, how the number of crashes uh, that have been, and of course, the previous crashes uh, right uh, from September 24, 22, dating back all the way to August 12, 2012. Now, Kingfisher rig uh, to be installed by December. Uh, trucks carrying all oil drilling equipment at the Malaba border at the weekend. The pictures over there showing uh, the first consignment arriving at the Kingfisher oil field in Chikube district, which happened on a Monday. And also looking at the interest rate uh, of uh, uh, to the midterm access, of course, uh, as according to NSSF when they were making their announcement yesterday, showing quite a decline uh, from the previous one. Well, moving on to the second page of the Daily Monitor, Ebola outbreak, parents withdraw pupils from schools over Ebola and confusion as Ebola figures fail to add up. Now, today in history, government changes law on municipal councillors. The year we are talking about was 1966. Well, in the new vision, um, uh, they have a top story right there behind the rising sugar prices. And that is uh, detailed on page 7 of the New Vision. But also they give you a big headline. NSSF pays members record shillings 1.2 trillion. Now over 21,700 benefited from the 20% midterm access. That is also detailed on page 4. But they cover a picture right there of uh, President Museveni. Oil projects will go as planned, says Museveni. And uh, of course that is also detailed on page 3. Now, over 150 SMEs to benefit from Shillings 1 billion program. That is also in the new vision for this morning. Insecurity tightened at hospital. Of course, talking about the Ebola cases in uh, the Mobende uh, hospital. NEMA orders sugar farms to restore forests. That is also detailed on page eight of the new vision. Now, crossing over to the second page, they give you that story about the SMEs to benefit from the Shillings One Billion program. And of course, today in history, giving you, taking you way back in 2008, workers call of NSSF demo. And uh, also back in 1964, Kennedy murder was no conspiracy, according to uh, the government report that did come out then from, uh, for the US president. That and more details in the new vision. Well, Daily Monitor Sports, uh, we're looking at how Oilers are going for eighth. 
and of course uh, the question here is can Blazers stop them having won the championship with Warriors in 2012 Jeroni crossed to take charge of newly promoted Oilers and seven seasons later he has seven titles with the club and uh, better rankings on agenda as shakings go for test series this is of course in the netball sport and uh, showing the she cranes matches in the united kingdom and uh, the dates have been also put there uh, for you to make a follow-up and the uefa nations league an apology uh, is what we're looking at manu captain harry maguire has issued an apology and admitted to making mistakes during England's 3-3 three three draw with Germany. Huh. All right. <laughs> well, crossing over to the New Vision Sport, why ginger hippos are rolling. That is an inside story. Very interesting to look at. But also, uh, who will be the champion? Talking about the NBL Women Final Best of Seven Series that is going to be today at Lugogo. They give you uh, also a picture right there. Vipers coach Rubalto and his assistants who are waiting on their credentials to be verified. Is Oliviera qualified? That is uh, the Vipers in a state of near panic. Well, yet to find out whether he actually makes it as the Vipers coach. That is an interesting right one right there for the Vipers fan. But also inside on more stories across uh, the sports world, why Uganda dominated in the Fiasa games. They also give you some of the pictures right there about the same and of course more in the moves up stage with Chambogo according to the weekend games, how they are standing in the total energy under 17 African Cup of Nations zonal qualifiers. That is all in the New Vision Sport for today. Now in the Daily Nation, winners and losers in route of first cabinet. Kome is a new police boss, Moturi, uh, the attorney general. Now in a ruthless wipeout of the remains of the Uhuru era, the president crafts a heavily political executive by rewarding senior politicians in his Kenya Kwanzaa camp. But not all got the spoils of the new regime. Well, there are headshots, several headshots, uh, showing you a splash of the politicians and a sprinkling of uh, the technocrats that have uh, maybe turned out to be the winners in here. Well, get a full detailed story of the ladies and gentlemen that are looking at uh, starting the new journey in this uh, under the new regime of the new president of Kenya, William Ruto, and uh, you know. And in other dailies as well, get yourself the daily monitor and the new vision to catch up on all these stories and more. Well, also one thing that you ought to look out for definitely is the traffic uh, situation this morning. And I want to focus on areas uh, coming in from the other side of town, uh, coming in, of course, uh, from uh, Seta, uh, connecting through um, Boyogere, Chireka, all the way to Nakawa and uh, to Kampala but also just to remind you of our poll question what more can government do to prevent the rapid uh, spread of Ebola in the country uh, aside from the interventions that are already at play uh, by the Ministry of Health what more do you think they can incorporate to make sure that uh, this virus can be contained in the several parts of the country now headed uh, to our traffic situation this morning coming in from the areas of Seta as you're joining all the way to Boyagere. I could say Seta is a qu uh, it's quite very busy this morning and uh, the traffic is uh, building on most of uh, the most the biggest part of those roads and uh, we're seeing the orange uh, stretches are uh, taking over most of uh, this uh, very specific part. Now, of course, as you continue all the way towards Boyagere on this Kampala Ginger Highway, you'll be expecting some traffic. We do have a traffic hiccup over there. And as you go further, of course, uh, the traffic keeps building, which is clearly shown by the orange uh, spots. And uh, getting, of course, uh, to Boyagere, well, the 
traffic doesn't become any different. Matter of fact, uh, you should be expecting some more traffic at the junction where we do have cars uh, coming in from Chobe Road over here. And of course, we do have cars that are cutting across uh, to continue via the bypass uh, to connect to Chireka. We also do have cars that may want to be taking the Nambode route. So this very spot uh, shows you that the traffic over here is quite a given. Now, continuing, of course, all the way uh, via the the, the bypass there is quite some traffic over here we do have uh, this traffic building up and this is around Chireka where we also have cars coming in from Namugongo Road trying to join the main road which is the Kampala Ginger Highway we also do have cars uh, that are coming in from Kamoli Road which is also another shortcut uh, that is used by several people coming in from Nalia and other neighboring uh, st uh, rather um, uh, neighboring towns uh, to join uh, this main road and of course as you continue all the way trying uh, to join uh, to Nakawa through Banda Banda is quite also very busy this morning uh, there are very many cars coming in from Banda Close, Chambogo all trying to connect at this very specific spot so that they can join uh, the main highway so we are definitely seeing traffic over here and uh, for those cars that are maybe uh, cars that are trying to make their way uh, back to Chireka using the same route. The traffic is also starting to build up, but at least uh, for the most part of it, you shouldn't be worried. And uh, moving through Chambo Golf Coast, trying to connect to Nakawa, the traffic builds uh, further as you go. Uh, the orange lines over here clearly show you that uh, it's not going to be an easy route for you to navigate, but regardless, you have to show some bit of patience. And getting to Nakawa, the traffic over here is quite very heavy, and uh, seeing as we do have a market around the Plus, it is expected because we have very many motorists, we have very many cyclists, we have many pedestrians. So it's a bit chaotic, I must say. No wonder we do have the heavy traffic on uh, this spot. Of course, continuing all the way from Nakawa, I must say the road gets uh, busier by the minute. The stretch is actually very long all the way from Nakawa of traffic as you're trying to join uh, Kampala Ginger Highway. And of course, uh, going through Lugogo, well, it makes sense because we also do have very many other cars coming in from the different parts of town trying to join uh, via Lugogo to join uh, this uh part of the road we also get to the junction over here where we have uh, cars coming in from Ntinda we do have cars coming in from the Nakawa route as they're joining here so yes do also expect some heavy traffic over there well that's it for the cars and everybody else who is uh, making their way uh, from that part of Kampala that is of course a setter uh, joining through Woyogere to Chireka Nakawa and finally to the city center overall I could say the road is quite very busy and the traffic is already building up on some parts of this same road. That's it from the traffic updates this morning. Marlene is also here to give you quite uh, more information coming in from the climate and weather news. Have a wonderful Wednesday morning. I am Philomena Masko. I leave you to Marlene Kenyana. Well, thank you very much, Philomena, for that update. And, of course, I want to take it from there, more about the weather. And, of course, uh, we this morning we did have that story about uh, the tropical storm across the U.S. that is now into a hurricane category. And, of course, that has already brought in a lot of uh, effects across the U.S. And uh, yesterday, what we do know is that it made landfall across uh, Cuba as a Category 3 hurricane. Now, that is the kind of hurricane that will be destructive, bringing down uh, buildings that are not well secured, that would take down um, um, mostly light objects as well. That's it. Uh, it also accompanied by strong winds. Now, what we do know is that Tropical Storm Ian has already been, um, made its course towards Florida. And uh, by now, actually this morning, there was an alert that was issued out for canceling uh, flights across Florida. Now, so far, the effect that did come through from Cuba, the, uh, the tropical cyclone or the hurricane was associated with strong winds and flooding across the city and a lot of places still underwater from this effect. It is also headed mostly for the Tampa area across Florida. Now, most of the areas have already gotten the effects. You look at Miami also getting more of that effect from uh, the tropical uh, storm. And of course, the watch is indicating that it could land as a category four hurricane that will be across uh, 
Florida. And of course, what we do know so far is that uh, Cuba has entirely been without power after yesterday making landfall with a Hurricane Ian. And of course, what we do know is that obviously it is also bringing in parts of the associated uh, effects like infrastructure that has been affected. Also, the state-run media did report that uh, most of the, the, the failures in national electricity system has been due to this hurricane. And of course, uh, still the aftermath of the hurricane uh, is still to be ascertained as there are more rescue operations on ground coming through. But again, with the effects of the hurricane still taking place, a lot cannot be done in terms of rescue. Now, the president of the U.S. did come out to actually warn people about the same, saying that uh, it is about time that the federal government takes uh, Florida into accountability, especially when it comes to preparing for most of these storms that come by. And of course, Biden has over and over talked about the effects of climate change and how the U.S. should be at the center of fighting climate change and of course talking more about uh, some of the climate action platforms that he has put across. However, that has not st stopped uh, most of these cyclones uh, from hitting uh, the U.S. And of course, what we do know is that this could still be associated with a lot of effects, making sure that uh, these are all life-threatening um, expectancy, especially with such a major hurricane hitting the area. Now, you look at islands that have also been affected uh, just recently. You looked at, uh, we looked at Puerto Rico areas within Dominica Republic that have also been affected by just uh, the recent hurricane, but also across the Philippines where we did have that Typhoon Nuru just a few days ago. It looks like the accumulative uh, tropical storms that are developing across the Atlantic and of course now it begs a question of whether or not these are related to climate change. Now scientists have come up with analysis especially regarding the recent uh, hurricanes and typhoons saying that it is no coincidence that when at the time when we're looking at a warming world more of these hurricanes are making their way into the world so meaning that this could actually be related to climate change. You look at the storms that keep surging across um, areas within or near the Atlantic Ocean and all these are coming from a warming uh, place within the oceans meaning that as the oceans get warmer they are getting more favorable for most of these tropical storms to form so we can expect more of these uh, events coming up especially if we do not uh, act to make sure that the rising temperature is kept well below two degrees centigrade at least most of the plans that have been made are towards 2050 but we cannot wait until 2050 to see some of these um, changes because by the time you wait for that then most of these storms that are actually taking lives destroying property and i think also africa we've had our, our fair share of most of these tropical cyclones we did see just at the beginning of the year about four cyclones hitting madagascar bringing a lot of effects to malawi zimbabwe all those areas are also no stranger to most of these storms that develop over the Indian Ocean. So meaning that no one is safe at this point. Whether or not as Africa we contribute to the problem of climate change, we're still going to be uh, influencing, uh, uh, to be impacted by most of these effects that come with uh, climate change and of course uh, with the rising temperatures. And now it also comes at the time when Uganda, we have a problem of uh, whether or not the oil pipeline project should go on. Now that is still a question that a lot of Ugandans are concerned about, but the president did come out to say it's uh, something that the country is looking at in terms of uh, you know, raising the economy or even getting into the oil business as well. There are concerns about the environmental impacts or the climate-related uh, impacts that it could, close, it could cause. But if those are addressed by the companies that will be um, into the oil refinery, then maybe we can look at a clean production. And that is something that I think our scientists should also be focused on while we're talking about oil production for the country and being good for our economy. But the impacts on the environment is something that should be addressed. Now, it won't matter whether the statements that are coming up as saying you know what it's not good for the country it's not uh, climate friendly but if you are doing a, cl a climate smart system where you are minimizing the impact I think it can be done and uh, pro probably also be in line with what we are taking into COP27 this year 
about how we are going so far as a country in tackling climate change and some of the national determined contributions that Uganda's, Uganda's delegation will be taking to Egypt across COP should include our current investments and how we are making sure that we are going uh, climate smart. And, and, and that is something that we are yet to find out as the conference is due this November in Egypt to also see what the world leaders will come up, especially when it comes to uh, climate action across the world and away from that we also want to look at what is happening across the country we will be tapping in from our satellites that is also looking at uh, what is over the country for this morning we did start off with mostly sunny weather across eastern uganda the karamoja region most areas within uh, the elgon region as well mostly cloudy uh, that is for the central parts of northern Uganda. Now where there are those blue to orange and green colors, also the red colors, that is indicative of the rainy systems that are developing as we speak. Now we look at the rains that are starting over across the northwestern parts of the country. That is where we have Arua, Yumbe already having those rainy conditions. That system seems to be dissipating across the area, meaning that the rains are starting to clear off. But again, it leaves mostly cloudy conditions. Also that system does extend to central northern Uganda, meaning that areas of Kitigumgulu as we speak are also having mostly cloudy weather and that is also extending with the clouds across uh, the, Elg I mean the Lake Choga region that is also looking at uh, mostly rainy conditions as the morning progresses. We also have uh, the rainy system that did start off earlier across midwestern Uganda, parts of Hoima, Fort Porter, but it looks like those rains are starting to uh, clear up a little bit, although there are more systems that are developing across southwestern Uganda, so meaning that most of those rains might redevelop as the morning progresses. We also look at uh, mostly Chigezi Highlands, looking at Kavali right now, dealing with cloudy weather, but we do expect that to clear up for mostly a mix of clouds and sunshine later in the, in, in, in the mid-morning to afternoon, but also mostly concerned about the huge system that is starting to develop across Lake Victoria Basin. It means that this could actually be headed westwards and we could be looking at more rains coming our way, especially for western Lake Victoria Basin areas of Masaka. Do expect those rains to come your way. Rain was Zimbabwe, that area will be affected by those rains from that system that is starting to develop across Lake Victoria. And of course, that will also bring temperatures down to at least uh, the lower 20s within 23 to 24. Still the same forecast for the central part of Lake Victoria Basin, where we have Kampala, Entebbe, we have Wakil so Mukono, those areas could also be looking at a little bit of rain as the day progresses due to some of the systems that are starting to develop across Lake Victoria. Now still some systems developing over Lake Victoria could bring us rains across uh, the eastern part of Lake Victoria, Tororo, Ginger for now, mostly a mix of clouds and sunshine, but it looks like you could also be having rains in uh, your morning for today. Across the Mount Elgon Highlands where we have Mbale, we have Bududa over there. We're also looking at uh, starting off with quite a mix of clouds and sunshine, but we do expect a little bit of rains to come in later as the day progresses. Now it looks like mostly the western stretch and the southern sector are expected to start off with mostly those rainy conditions and uh, the same system could continue into the afternoon. Basically we're looking at a rainy day for much of western Uganda. You also look at the southern part of uh, the country where we have uh, mostly the Lake Victoria Basin. You also look at southwestern Uganda well, we could be dealing with most of those rainy conditions. But again, temperatures are starting off quite chilly across most areas, although we are maintaining that those were warm conditions for northern Uganda. The Karamoja region already forecast to start off with a warm 27, meaning that later in the afternoon it could actually get to uh, 30, since we're looking at uh, quite still in terms of sunny and cloudy conditions. Well, that is it in terms of weather for this morning. And of course, we do have Good Morning Uganda agenda that will be coming up after this and we'll also be giving you some of the sports highlights. Later than that, we'll be coming in with Good Morning Uganda Extra. My name is Molin Kenyana. I want to wish you a wonderful day. This is Good Morning Uganda. Every waking day is...
is a reminder just how beautiful this, our land, truly is. The kind of beauty that you can only find here, in the lush green all around us, and the wondrous sights within. It's in the distinct aroma of our cooking, to the taste of food that takes you on a journey. In the sound of homecoming and the sound of Mother Earth. In the magnificence we find on our travels and the exciting moments we experience. Ours is the kind of beauty that comes in all things big and small. All we have to do is awaken our senses and truly enjoy what's uniquely ours. Explore Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Welcome to English in a Minute. Shot put is an Olympic sport. You throw a small but heavy metal ball as far as you can. Long shot. I bought a lottery ticket. You know, the chances of winning are very small. Uh, I know. Very, very small. Uh, what I mean is, you're not going to win. I know it's a long shot, but the top prize is $35 million. $35 million? <sighs> Later. Where are you going? To buy all the tickets. A long shot is something that has little chance of succeeding. You may not expect to succeed, but long shots can be worth trying. People who follow horse racing use this expression a lot. And that's English in a Minute. I remember the lockdown. When the streets were empty and our lives disrupted. When businesses closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance. Hospitals were full. We lost loved ones, jobs, and hope. Our children couldn't study anymore. We cannot let this happen again. We should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. Welcome to English in a Minute. Shot put is an Olympic sport. You throw a small but heavy metal ball as far as you can. Long shot. I bought a lottery ticket. You know, the chances of winning are very small. Uh, I know. Very, very small. Uh, what I mean is, you're not going to win. I know it's a long shot, but the top prize is $35 million. $35 million? <sighs> Later. Where are you going? To buy all the tickets. A long shot is something that has little chance of succeeding. You may not expect to succeed, but long shots can be worth trying. People who follow horse racing use this expression a lot. And that's English in a Minute. Forget last season, forget the oohs and ahs. Forget every moment that stole the show, because the real show is here on GoTV. It's the new season, it's action-packed, and it's going to be non-stop football. With over 1,000 games from more than seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup, make sure you get the best seat in the house this new football season. Get a GoCoder with one month of GoTV value for only 25,000 Uganda shillings and enjoy non-stop football. GoTV Uganda, love it. 
When you talk about our motherland Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, you cannot fail to smile because of the smile that fills the faces of the citizens. Our nice good weather and nature that sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person is the sweetness from the flavored drink Alleluia Jingati drink and Alleluia Tamarin drink. The flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100% natural. Enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it. Made by Alleluia Reflexology, Healthy Solutions and Nutritional Research Center Limited. Get yourself a bottle of Alleluia from all shops around. Makere University is celebrating 100 years of excellent service to humanity. Over those 100 years, a lot of people have contributed greatly to making Makerere the great university that it is now, including people making sacrifices for land on which the university was built, and we are indebted to these people. Makerere has produced great statesmen, great people in all trades who have moved not just Uganda, but the entire East African and Central African region and the entire continent. We are now celebrating those achievements and we are looking back and saying, can we leverage those successes to build even more for the future? As we celebrate 100 years, we are calling upon all our stakeholders, particularly our alumni, so that we can more meaningfully contribute to transforming our society. Please, you can follow us on our website, www.mac.ac.ug, and there are special pages there dedicated to 100 years celebrations. So I welcome all of you, I encourage all of you to participate as much as you can. Stay connected on the largest 4G network in Uganda using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi at only 75,000 Uganda shillings. It comes with 15 GBs free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 of your friends and family at a go. Visit the nearest Airtel shop to get one today or call 0800-333-330 for free delivery within Kampala. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GBs. Airtel, the smartphone network. I remember the lockdown. When the streets were empty and our lives disrupted. When businesses closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance. Hospitals were full. We lost loved ones jobs and hope. Our children couldn't study anymore. We cannot let this happen again. We should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. day is a reminder just how beautiful this, our land, truly is. The kind of beauty that you can only find here. In the lush green all around us and the wondrous sights within. It's what you feel in the gentle caress of tropical wind from the mountaintops. And the glow in your heart from a warm neighborly invite. It's in the distinct aroma of our cooking to the taste of food that takes you on a journey. In the sound of homecoming and the sound of Mother Earth. In the magnificence we find on our travels and the exciting moments we experience. 
Ours is the kind of beauty that comes in all things big and small. All we have to do is awaken our senses and truly enjoy what's uniquely ours. Forget last season, forget the oohs and the ahs. Forget every moment that stole the show, because the real show is here on GoTV. It's the new season, it's action-packed, and it's going to be non-stop football. With over 1,000 games from more than seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup, make sure you get the best seat in the house this new football season. Get a GoCoda with one month of GoTV value for only 25,000 Uganda shillings and enjoy non-stop football. GoTV Uganda, love it. When you talk about our motherland Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, you cannot fail to smile because of the smile that fills the faces of the citizens. Our nice good weather and nature that sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person is the sweetness from the flavored drink Alleluia Jinga Tea Drink and Alleluia Tamarind Drink. The flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100% natural. Enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it. Made by Alleluia Reflexology, Healthy Solutions and Nutritional Research Center Limited. Get yourself a bottle of Alleluia from all shops around. Makere University is celebrating 100 years of excellent service to humanity. Over those 100 years, a lot of people have contributed greatly to making Makerere the great university that it is now, including people making sacrifices for land on which the university was built, and we are indebted to these people. Makerere has produced great statesmen, great people in all trades who have moved not just Uganda, but the entire East African and Central African region and the entire continent. We are now celebrating those achievements and we are looking back and saying, can we leverage those successes to build even more for the future? As we celebrate 100 years, we are calling upon all our stakeholders, particularly our alumni, so that we can more meaningfully contribute to transforming our society. Please, you can follow us on our website, www.mac.ac.ug, and there are special pages there dedicated to 100 years celebrations. So I welcome all of you, I encourage all of you to participate as much as you can. Stay connected on the largest 4G network in Uganda using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi at only 75,000 Uganda shillings. It comes with 15 GBs free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 of your friends and family at a go. Visit the nearest Airtel shop to get one today or call 0800 333 for free delivery within Kampala. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GBs. Airtel, the smartphone network. I remember the lockdown. When the streets were empty and our lives disrupted. When businesses closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance. 
hospitals were full. We lost loved ones, jobs, and hope. Our children couldn't study anymore. We cannot let this happen again. We should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. Every waking day is a reminder just how beautiful this, our land, truly is. The kind of beauty that you can only find here. In the lush green all around us and the wondrous sights within. It's what you feel in the gentle caress of tropical wind from the mountaintops. And the glow in your heart from a warm neighborly invite. in the distinct aroma of our cooking to the taste of food that takes you on a journey. In the sound of homecoming and the sound of Mother Earth. In the magnificence we find on our travels and the exciting moments we experience. Ours is the kind of beauty that comes in all things big and small. All we have to do is awaken our senses and truly enjoy what's uniquely ours. Explore Uganda. This week on UBC. How many teachers in Uganda did you consult? But there's a mistake we are making. Which is good? Which is good? Which is good? Which is good? We went to this school, we ran into Western, <laughs> we ran into Northern, we ran into then you come. Is, well, isn't that an achievement? Objective and non-partisan. Honorable Minister, there were a number of points. I want to start with you. Straight from the hearts of open-minded men and women. Money tends to move faster at night. <laughs> so when, uh, when, when people are not when counting, go ahead. Don't take it for granted. Candid and authentic. Because Uganda is not Thailand. That's that's not correct. And and we should stop that kind of mentality. So <laughs> so what I'm what I'm that, saying that's is a um, trick question. Don't answer. I'm, I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that. Um, Tell him you speak low. I think that's where we are beginning to have a problem. I think what is going to kill the parish model are all the misconceptions of how it's supposed to run. I know that the prime minister is listening. Behind the headlines. Charles, let us agree. We liberalized the economy. We are several nations put it together. Why, why don't you why don't you appreciate that? What if it fails? I am happy. And he's a good lawyer because I mean he's not in the power. <laughs> yeah. The parish development committee is a functional, it is there. That there is a parish chief that the beneficiary is doing. So we look at expenditure. We don't look at revenue. And that is the challenge we are giving them from Minister of Finance. Your fountain of new knowledge flowing into the mass body of knowledge. First get the knowledge of Bukedia, how they want to be modernized. Every Wednesday, 10 p.m. on your public broadcaster. You return money to the treasury, which is meant for the people. UBC, inspiring Uganda. This is Good Morning Uganda.
Good morning and thank you for being with us here on UBC TV. It is Good Morning Uganda. Kindly a reminder, every weekday we are here from 6.30, so make it a date with us. Do not miss this morning show that is well packaged. We have those light moments to spice up your mornings, but we also have something that is really uh, very hard for you. Reason being, we're now going to had issues that are affecting us that need address. And what we do there, we have guests in studios, and you're able to be part of the topic of discussion by simply using our various social media platforms. I'm Robert Chirapo Nyonyintono, and it is Good Morning Uganda Agenda. Now this morning, we want to look at labor externalization, and to be more specific, that is welfare of migrant workers. We know very well that a number of Ugandans, most of late, uh, the Middle East has made around on social media as everywhere because we have so many of our people heading into that direction seeking greener pastures which is a right which is also something that addresses the high unemployment rates we have as a country now what is happening most when it comes to domestic workers we are seeing a number of reports coming in of human rights abuses some coming with broken limbs others have lost lives but we still take our girls to this special area and remind